Good evening and welcome to a very exciting night. Uh, my name is Ian Rowe. I'm a senior visiting fellow at the Woodston Center and we are gonna have a great night. We're talking about the founding principles of our country, the empowering stories of resilience that have allowed millions of Americans to move from persecution to prosperity. We've had an overwhelming response. Uh, we have uh, teachers, school board members, uh, homeschoolers, folks from private schools, charter schools, uh, nonprofit leaders, all very interested in the Woodson Center 1776 Unite School Curriculum, which already has been downloaded more than 17,000 times across all 50 states. So we can't wait to tell you about it. Uh, I'm joined uh, by Reverend Jesse Turner, Betty Tyler, and Albert Paulson. I'll give a, a little bit uh, uh, more detailed intro and we'll talk about the very unique ways in which they're implementing this curricula. But first we have a very brief video uh, that gives you a very quick overview of uh, the 1776 Unites uh, curriculum, which is also available on the website. 1776unites.com. So what is in a lesson? Each lesson focuses on a story or figure from American history and contains a presentation, discussion questions, assessments, activities, and other resources. Lessons are mapped to common core learning standards for use in social studies, English, and social emotional learning. Teachers can feel free to present the lesson as a whole or just present parts that supplement a lesson. Lessons are geared for high school, but could be adapted to middle school or junior high school. Eventually, lessons for K-8 to will be available on our site for free. Lessons are uploaded monthly to 1776unites.com and are available for free after registering. Okay, that was great. So for those of you who are not familiar uh, with 1776 Unites, uh, it, is a, it is a movement, uh, primarily a black led movement focused on solutions to some of our country's greatest challenges in education, culture, upward mobility. Uh, we were all led by uh, the incredible Robert Woodson, Bob Woodson, uh, who's been a veteran of the civil rights movement and actually founded the Woodson Center more than 40 years ago to empower families in low-income communities to become agents of their own uplift. And one of the things that's so important about inspiring the rising generation to figure out how they can become architects of their own destiny is that they need to have an understanding of our nation's history. They have to understand their founding principles and how the embrace of those principles can be a vehicle through which they can become successful in their own lives. Now, unfortunately, it's not new news that most young people do not have a solid grasp of American history. If you look at the, uh, the nation's report card just from 2018, only 24% of eighth graders had a basic understanding of civics. And even more concerning, only 15% had reached a, a, a proficiency on the NAEP, uh, the National Assessment for Educational Progress in history. And this has been going on for a very long time, which is why there's such an effort to bolster civics education. So our kids, we already have a crisis where kids need to have a better understanding of accurate history. That's what made it so concerning that over the last couple of years, on top of this low level already of historical understanding is that this a new disturbing narrative has emerged around America's history. And it's most, um, most uh, exemplified in the New York Times 1619 project, which argued some, some very, very the country was 1876, it was 1619. It argued that the founding ideals were false when they were written, that the country was founded as a slaveocracy and not a democracy. And, and you know, historians of all political stripes uh, criticized uh, the, the correctness of the 1619 Project.
But you know, as, as we sat around the team at 1776 Unites, we wanna develop solutions. It's not enough to just shout in the rain and complain and say, why is that happening? But what is it that we can inspire teachers and students to say yes to? Could we actually create a curriculum that told a full and complete history, history of the African-American experience in the United States, warts and all, the stories of oppression, the stories of slavery, and also the stories of resilience and heroism, not by the rejection of the founding principles, but by the embrace. And could we create something that all teachers who have a desperate desire to inform our kids of all races, how could we use the specific experience of African-Americans in the United States to tell a universal story of how millions of all Americans have achieved success in their own lives. And so we started to work on an actual curriculum that has what I call both a look back and a look forward component. The look back, which we'll hear about, uh, about tonight, tells stories of, 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 of figures, just like you saw in the video, that you may not know, but are incredible stories of, uh, again, heroism, challenges, adversity, and yet what happened? How did these people succeed? So not only the, the Tulsa massacre, what happened in the lead up to the Tulsa massacre so that there was such ownership within the black community and what happened after the Tulsa massacre in terms of the rebuilding? We gotta tell the whole story, warts and all, and we're gonna have some examples of what we do. And then the look forward component is all about what are the core principles and behaviors that we want young people to adopt in order to become successful. So that's where the Woodson principles uh, come through. And so we're really excited to be joined tonight uh, by three folks who are actually implementing the curriculum in real settings. And as I said before, uh, you know, we've had 17, more than 17,000, I think we're close to 18,000 downloads uh, already by teachers in all 50 states in traditional district schools, in charter schools, uh, uh, private schools, religious schools, home schools, after school, prison ministries, wherever character formation is happening for children. And the thing that's been so wonderful to uh, hear is not only the implementation of the 1776 Unites curriculum in classrooms, they're being, it's being implemented in a lot of different uh, settings. And so we thought it'd be very helpful to do a webinar tonight to showcase uh, three different uh, uh, places where that's happening. And then we also wanna take uh, your questions. So let me start with our three guests. Uh, we have Reverend Jesse Turner, who's a pastor of the oldest African-American Baptist church, church in Arkansas. It is 178 years old. He's a highly regarded community leader recognized by the US Congress for his work founding and leading a variety of community-based organizations that focus, focus on uh, voter registration, crime prevention, uh, reducing violence, and mentoring in schools, which he's gonna talk about. We're also joined by Betty Tyler, a uh, founder and director of Marvelous Works, a nonprofit based in Mississippi uh, and founded upon spiritual principles to improve lives through treatment, prevention, educational services. She's got more than 30 years experience in treating substance abuse, mental health and trauma. And I think you're gonna find her usage of the 1776 Unites curriculum very interesting. And uh, finally, but not least, Albert Paulson, a nationally recognized social studies teacher of 23 years at the West Windsor uh, Plainsboro High School in New Jersey. Albert teaches AP American uh, government and AP economics. He coordinates all the other extracurricular programs at his school. And very important, he has helped develop curriculum for FIRE individual rights in education, which is a very powerful uh, organization. So Reverend Turner, let me start with you, because again, uh, when you think of curriculum and you, know, you tr traditionally think, oh, that's teachers implement implementing it in classrooms, which we will talk about, but you've got an interesting mentoring program where you've used the curriculum to talk about 
the Constitution. So, so share with us a few minutes on how you're uh, using the curriculum and what some of the elements are that have been most impactful. Certainly, uh, it's uh, good to be here. And the first thing I'd like to say is how uh, powerful this uh, curriculum is in terms of us using it to uh, enlighten our kids. And so it is an outstanding resource that I think every teacher in this nation can use and benefit from in their classrooms. But we mentor here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, we use one of our mentoring components is pen or pencil. Uh, pen or pencil is about uh, prison, which is the pen, and pencil is about education. And we try to push kids away from the penitentiary and push them towards education because we know that's where they'll be uh, most productive. And one of the uh, items that we use when we are teaching, we use the constitution. Each child that we work with gets a constitution so they can learn their basic rights under the constitution. And so we use that and then we can move over into the curriculum of the of the 1776 Unites. And if we wanted to talk about, uh, say, STEM, we could then transfer over to uh, uh, Mr. McCoy and, and Elijah McCoy and talk about the things that he has done. But I believe that the most important thing that we try to tell them is as you look at Mr. Elijah McCoy and how he invented things and how he has the patents and things of this nature, understand the environment at the time. He could have looked back and complained, but he did not do that. He moved forward and began to use his, his intellect, his brain, his, the thing that he needed to do to get these uh, patents done. And so we use that and we try to always uh, look at uh, 1619 uh, and we compare because we know that the country was started in 1776. So I'm, I am extremely proud to be able to uh, show some things uh, from the constitution because if we talk about uh, voting rights, then we need to move into the six, into the 1776 unites curriculum to deal with that. So it is a it is an extremely uh, exciting curriculum, and and we use it to the best, uh, and we try to get our kids to understand. Don't look at yourself as a victim, but look at yourself as someone who can. And I often say this about the CRT. The CRT gives us uh, uh, nothing to do. But complain. But the 1776 uh, curriculum gives us an opportunity to, to build and move forward. So we don't be bitter, we get better by using this curriculum. So I'm just excited to be able to implement it here in our schools. Wow, that is a great line. We don't get bitter, we get better. Do I have permission to, uh, to steal that sometime? <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, you were mentioning, uh, uh, Reverend Turner, uh, the story of Elijah McCoy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, Elijah McCoy, and again, an incredible figure in African-American history, he was the child of runaway slaves. And he, he was smart, he became an engineer, as Reverend Turner said, and he developed products for the sort of burgeoning train uh, industry uh, around oil. And his products were so superior that uh, they uh, created all the uh, people uh, tried to knock off uh, these sort of uh, facsimiles of his products. And when engineers went to buy his products and they encountered the fakes, they said, no, 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 no. I want the real McCoy, uh, which most people don't know that that's where uh, that uh, turn of phrase has come from. And that's one of the lessons within the Woodson Center of 17 curriculum. Let me just ask you, was it difficult to implement the curriculum? Was it, you know, what was the process of downloading it? Was it hard? Did you find the materials themselves practically helpful? No, it was not difficult at all. Once you go in and register, 
uh, and then you click the button to begin downloading. Uh, they come to you uh, very easily. Uh, and so, and they are free. I like to say that these <laughs> curriculums are free. Uh, so if a person would like it, just go into the site, uh, register, and look forward to seeing that, that, that material coming to you very quickly. All right, excellent. All right, uh, Betty Tyler, so excited that you are joining us. And uh, you have also just a very interesting uh, application because you're actually working with female ex-offenders and using this curriculum. When we heard that, we thought, gosh, it's just yet another interesting way in which these stories of resilience in the past can inspire resilience in the present and the future. So tell us a little bit about how you've been implementing the 1776 Unites curriculum with your work. Yes, thank you. Uh, and again, I, as Reverend Turner, am so honored and excited to be on this platform with such giants in history, I call you all. <laughs> uh, the curriculum that we use actually is entitled the Woodson Principles Curriculum. And of that curriculum, we focus this on three major components that have proved to be most beneficial to our students. Uh, and those are the female ex-offenders, but they too are students as well. The first component, the critical thinking and discussion questions from the resilience and learn optimism lesson. That component recommends two uh, screening inventories. And the first one happens to be uh, inventory that determines how a client relates to optimism versus pessimism. And the second tool assists the client, the student or the client in determining how resilient they are, because both of those factors are so very important mm -hmm. in transition for those females coming back into society and being able to adapt and adjust. Uh, uh, these tools help the students to see for themselves areas of needed improvement with themselves to successfully adapt with challenging and life experiences. Uh, the question to the uh, piece, to the component, actually help the students reflect back on their original mindset, how they previously were thinking before they were graded and scaled with these two scales to see that the areas that they need to improve on. And with that in mind, they easily and readily adapted to the challenge prior the way they were thinking, which they have determined by now was faulty and incorrect. Uh, a quick example I will use from the curriculum, verbalizing the perception of failing a test. And that particular example was used with this particular component. And initially, the student would view failing the test as a deflator of self-esteem, maybe considering giving up, thinking that there's no need of trying. But then on the other hand, after being exposed to optimism versus the pessimism and the resilience, then they would view that uh, failing of that test as a valuable tool to learn that perception changes and then the motivation changes for them to retest and continue to retest no matter how many times they fail in order to pass the test. And they do eventually and more oftentimes sooner than later than they think. Uh, the second activity, the second component happens to be the activities and the assignments from the Woodson Principle lesson. And those are 10 principles teach how to individually uplift and empower the student to deal with and overcome obstacles with themselves and in life. Uh, those 10 principles happens to be their uh, words. You would think that they were commonplace words used in everyday interaction. However, the whistle principle bring these words to life with meaning, with fruition, with projection. And uh, those words are assets, agency, competence, grace, innovation, inspiration, integrity, resilience, of course, transparency, and witness. And the transparency part is a very, um, is, is 
is a very useful piece with the whole concept because they understand early on that if they are unable to be transparent, then it's kind of like he who conceals his disease cannot expect to be cured. So they have no problem becoming transparent. A little difficult at first, but once again, when they buy into the concept of the Wilson principles, they open up and begin to flourish with these concepts. The last component that we use, uh, well, actually we use all the components, but these are the main three that we focus on. And this one happens to be the standards and learning objectives from the Woodson Principles, which is an equal, or in my opinion, a more important component of the curriculum that proved to be very effective, educating and teaching American history and concepts. Some of the times it, the accuracy, even to me, as I didn't know prior to engaging and uh, utilizing this career, actually informing myself of these educational history pieces and then being able to teach the students. Yes, of course, education is very important. However, this curriculum allows the student to visualize the importance and difference in providing accurate information. That again, once we focus on accurate information and we can trust that the information in this curriculum 1776 is very accurate uh, versus sometimes what history has taught us. Uh, another example, I would say the degrees of PhDs and education degrees are very good in themselves, yes. Yet a person in active addiction, which oftentimes a lot of my females have experienced at some point, is more apt to identify, trust, and relate to the recovering person, whether she has a high school diploma or even a GED. So with, in conclusion to our uh, implementation of the curriculum. The students were as eager as I to learn some accurate historical facts about reform and revitalization in the country we live and learn about individuals that have done so much to contribute to the pouring out of themselves, such as uh, Mr. McCoy and Biddy Mason and some of the others that are in the curriculum. And uh, beginning with only a passion of the time to give back to help and humble beginnings, such as Mr. Robert Woodson, who developed this curriculum modeled by his own life. Miss Betty, you are you are amazing, amazing, amazing. I am. Um, I can already see questions are coming in, and so if you do have a question, uh, please use the Q and A function uh, in the chat. We'll um, uh, after we speak to. Um, Mr. Paulson, but uh, you know, Betty, you just said something very interesting, which is that, and you focused on the Woodson principles, and there's an actual lesson focused on those ten principles, and the whole idea, as you just said, to make it real, to animate these ideas of resiliency. How do young people, you know, um, achieve this within their own lives? And uh, this idea of learned optimism, I'd love for you just to talk about that for a second, because. A lot of kids, when they're hearing this dominant narrative of solely because of the color of your skin, you're either an oppressor or you're oppressed. And if you hear that over and over and over and over again, suddenly you may actually develop uh, learned helplessness, not exactly. learned optimism. So I'm curious how, so, so just talk a little bit about that particular component. Right, and uh, exactly, and that's one of the things oftentimes with the young students, the, the children, or whatever population, even we as adults oftentimes do not really perceive that we have a pessimistic view of the future or of our sales or of our capabilities. Because as you say that, you know, we've become accustomed to the oppression. And it's as if, okay, I this is this is my this is what I'm supposed to do. Just get by. I'm not gonna complicate anything with what you're talking about. What you're talking about, I can't see that. I can't even visualize that. So one of the keys, as I was saying earlier, and, and this Mr. Woodson, the principles with that particular lesson offered those two screening inventories. And again, they are downloadable with the Woodson principles lesson. So when the student will actually 
complete that scale and then see it in black and white with themselves, their perception or how they think, and then grade that themselves and see, okay, I, I do have a pessimistic view of things. So now that I can realize that, because even though change is the ultimate goal, first and far more importantly, they need to recognize what needs changing. And if the concept previous has been, there's nothing wrong with me. This is just the way it is. My mom, you know, we were brought up in the household. We, we don't uh, uh, stir the water. We don't ask all these questions. We don't get outside of our mean. This is who we are and this is what we're going to do. But then once they see it themselves and they and recognize that, oh, this is where I am and I no longer want to be there. So Miss Betty, what can I do to move from this place of pessimism into optimism? That's when the key word learn comes in. We learn these things. We learn how to become an optimist just as we learn how to ride a bicycle. And once we ride, we fall down a few times on that bike. We get on that bike, we fall down. And back in the day in my time, a girl had better not fall on a boy's bike, Mr. Pella, that with that thing across. <laughs> but once we learn that strategy, we can get on top of the hill and come down and turn the handlebars loose and ride that bicycle. And that's the same way learn optimism becomes into place. Woo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, a hard, uh, hard act to follow. Thank Oof. you very much, Miss Betty. But Albert, you know, you've been teaching, you know, in a traditional high school setting for 20 plus years. So you've seen lots of different efforts to um, educate uh, our kids around American history. And I think you've also seen this trend over the last couple of years trying to reframe American history, particularly around this very pessimistic view of the country. How have you um, been able to use the 1776 Unites curriculum to advance those objectives of, of empowering young people based on their, their history understanding? Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Uh, this is an amazing panel. And um, I'm so grateful for this curriculum. Uh, I've been teaching now for 23 years. And, and this curriculum is a game changer. It truly is. Um, we have significant challenges as teachers in our schools. Um, you know, I, I, I guess the best way to, to kind of break this down would be, first, we, we, we have to find truth. Truth is difficult to find. And, you know, we're, we're competing against social media. And we're competing against TikTok and Snapchat and all these other things. Um, the voices of the past talk to us. And they give us what we need to hear. Mm. That is the truth that we need. And we learn from it. We, you know, we, 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 we share a past and, and, and we're moving to the future together. And that's, that's what brings us together. That's our American DNA. And... Um, and it worries me that, you know, these kids, many of them come in, you hear these days of kids with, you know, depression, anxiety, and there's a lot of polarization. I'll tell you what, you know, with this curriculum, it uplifts every kid. It brings us all to a better place. And when we read these voices of the past, when we look at, I mean, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, you know, we, we, we read about Christmas addicts. We read about Elijah McCoy. We read about Jesse Owens. We, we read about the tragedy and the despair and the suffering. We have to know that. I mean, that's part of, that's a hard truth. But there's a the human spirit, this, this strength, this inner resilience that we all need to learn from and build off of in this journey that we're taking as Americans, this American story. And, and that's where we, 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 we need to get to the truth. And this is where we get into these narratives of history, these primary sources, and it's rigorous. And that's the other thing I like about this, it's rigorous. I mean, the kids have to roll up their sleeves and they have to read deep and they have to answer questions. And, and these lessons are a perfect package deal. <laughs> They, they provide you with activities, with videos, with, with questions and discussions and debate material. 
and they're adaptable for single day lessons for units. Um, I teach seniors, juniors, sophomores. Uh, these lessons are versatile. Uh, I teach government. I teach a course in the constitution and law and I teach economics. These lessons are perfectly suited for all of those classes. I mean, there are ways you can fuse these in and really make a meaningful learning experience for these kids. Um, you know, and, and civil discourse. We, we really need to make sure that we are building bonds of affection with each other. The, this curriculum does that. It truly does. It gets us talking to each other in ways that are authentic, honest. We respect each other. We can agree to disagree sometimes and that's okay. But we, we, we work together and we collaborate and we bring each other to a better place, right? And I mean, you know, that we're trying to fulfill this mission of, of, of our declaration of independence here. That's our mission statement. And we have the design, we have the blueprints, we have the constitution, we have the 14th amendment, we have the civil rights act. And we have the voices that we know guide us from Abraham Lincoln, to Frederick Douglass, to, to Martin Luther King, the letter from a Birmingham jail. I mean, we have all of these voices that can, and Bob Woodson, you know, these voices continue to guide us, bring us to a better place together, a more perfect union. And so the civil discourse is so important. And I, I guess the last part here is agency. You know, I, I, I hope that these kids realize that, that our country only works well when we all work together. <laughs> and, you know, this curriculum does that. It, it brings us together through these stories, through these narratives, that these are people who had, I mean, just so many challenges and, and, and things that are, I mean, just, just the weight of the world on their shoulders. And they show us a path. They show us a way. And, and that's what I think these, these kids need these, day, the, these days more than ever, is this meaningful, honest history that lifts up all kids and, and the liberty that it teaches them. You know, the liberty is, is the ability to, to maximize your inner resources. And these kids can look upon these historical narratives and realize, you know what? I can do this. I can, whatever passion I have, whatever talent I have, I'm gonna apply it. And I am going to really have uh, an ability to pursue anything that I want to. And, it, and I think that makes our classroom a place where everyone's voice is going to have uh, an impact in our discussions and uh, just bring everyone to, to a, a better place together. And I, and I think that's really what I think is just so different about the 1776 Unites mm -hmm. is that it's a human story, something we all need to hear more than ever. Wow, Albert, that's inspiring. I, and now I know why uh, your kid, your students love you so much. Oh. You, you, you just said something again, really, really important, this idea of truth. Yeah. Truth is really important because, you know, truth, one can create a narrative around history and say, this is truth. You can, you can sanitize history so that it's, so clean and ultra, you know, uber patriotic that you gloss over the negative realities, but you can also create a narrative where you only cherry pick the most egregiously negative elements of our country. And that's the danger I think of, of looking at history through a contemporary lens where someone has an agenda. So I'm just curious, how do you balance that in the classroom when you have to represent all perspectives. How does this curriculum help you share warts and all the true story of what happened in our country? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we, we, have, we have to reckon with our past. I mean, there's no doubt. Um, we, we have to, to recognize, you know, um, what, um, what injustices, what, you know, what occurred and, and how we went um, astray, far, far astray. I mean, our original sin 
of slavery and Jim Crow and 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 I mean just these these, these human tragedies that unfolded um, over time. We we have to talk about this stuff so kids understand that. I mean, America has like all nations, you know, pain and suffering, um, injustice and and hardship, and. We need to recognize that. So, I mean, if, if we're talking about, you know, reconstruction and we're talking about, um, you know, this, 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 the end of reconstruction where, where, you know, the deep South and you know what, even the North, I mean, Jim, Jim Crow found a foothold in the North. Um, and well, we need to recognize um, what that meant as far as um, how society treated people differently, how discrimination occurred, uh, both de facto and de jure, and that these, you know, these lives that whether they're in northern cities or, you know, on, on southern farms, how they affected real people. And, and understanding that past sharing that those those moments of pain i hope makes all of us again more closely bonded together as americans that we share this pain we have to recognize that this pain is something that again is is, is part of our american dna that we all share this pain we have to recognize it at the same time we have to look at what brings us together to move forward to a better place together and, and, and how people dug down so deep into their soul, into the human spirit and inspire us. And, and that's, I think, hopefully, you know, where we need to go. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we talk about Brown v. Board and, 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 and that is, I mean, absolutely a milestone precedent case. Um, we need to talk about the cases that preceded that as well. I mean, the building blocks of all of this, these human stories need to be told. And the, the, the courage, the bravery um, continue to, to let us better understand how we can all, um, I think, look at our history and look at society now be grateful and honor those who did all of these amazing things to bring us to this point and build off it as they've continued to do in the past we keep building off of it yep. and we continue to go to a better place yeah can i can i uh extend on that just a little bit absolutely uh as he talks about building i think that's what we have to do is build uh, and we also have to look at uh, those things that uh, he mentioned. Uh, and I believe that as Amber talked, I, I can think that uh, these things happen, but let us not stop at that. As we keep looking back, let us begin to look forward and begin to build. Uh, we look at where we are as a nation today, and people say, well, you know, we are a racist nation, but that is not the fact because we elected an African-American twice. And we have to look at these, these milestones that proves that, that we are not a racist nation. But I, I do something in our classes when we are uh, dealing with this history and talking about the lesser known uh, African-Americans that have uh, done things. And I will always ask my students, and I do it on an incentivized way. I'll get a gold dollar from the bank, and I'll use that as incentive, incentivized. And so I say, I got a dollar here, or I got two dollars here. I'll give you, if you can name me two African Americans that has done something great. But then I tell them, I said, now I don't want to hear Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass. Tell me somebody that you know. And many times the kids are stuck in that position. They won't mention Crispus Attucks. 
that's in the curriculum that we that we have. Him being uh, the first African American to die in the Revolutionary War. These things show that here is a man who believed in this nation enough that he was willing to give his life for freedom. And that's where we are today. And that's what the Constitution does. It gives us those points uh, that we can stand on for freedom. And, and all of us here have that same opportunity. You know, we look at the, the, the Voting Rights Act, and then we go back and we look at the 15th Amendment, where we got the right to vote. Well, we use uh, that voting lever to change things in our neighborhood. And so we try to teach the kids about voting so that they can change their community by using the lever, not to go and vote for someone just because they look like you, but what is their plan to improve your neighborhood and your community? So that's the point that we look at. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Both you and Albert talked about this idea of looking back as well as looking forward. That's an important, Part of the curriculum you know one of the units is focused on booker t washington who right. in the early 1900s partnered with julius rosenwald who at the time was the ceo of the the sears roebuck company and because of the inferior education that black students were receiving at that time they joined forces to build nearly 5,000 schools throughout the south exclusively for black children and I'm always stunned at the number of people that don't know about this incredible story of resiliency. And that's an example of yes. if we were able to do that then and make incredible gains when, when racism was enshrined into law, what do we have the capacity to achieve today? And that's right. what I feel is so inspiring. Wow. So, wait, okay. So, we have lots and lots of questions. Um, <laughs> let, let me start with it. Maybe, uh, Miss Betty, I'll go to you first. So, someone's asked a very real question, which is, if I'm in a school system or if I'm hearing uh, that they've adopted uh, critical race theory or the 1619 project, uh, you know, or there are these statements that anti-Black racism runs in the very DNA of the country. Can you imagine someone saying that? Well, that's actually what was in the 1619 project, a permanent malignancy. When you hear that kind of framing, how would you say, or what, what would you say 1776 Unites curriculum offers in terms of how to respond to that? Oh, okay. Um, and first, just let me just add from the previous uh, dialogue, which brings up to the same point, is because like, and we use the term accuracy a lot. Uh, correct information and even in the concept of a mindset of what's accurate and what's real one of the uh things that we talk about social welfare versus social reform so what is social welfare we was taught the social welfare or is pretty much isolated to us as African Americans because we were unfairly mistreated and we deserve the handout, which is maybe, uh, uh, I mean, the food stamps and the, the uh, benefits are good when necessary, but it shouldn't limit us to that. This is all what we deserve. The, and that's the uh, inaccurate information that is being passed on because our perception is we'll do this, so we become entitled to some meager existence what the so-called social welfare reforms allows us instead of pro, uh, revitalizing our whole mindset. One of the things, a quick example with, uh, with, with our curriculum also with the latest coming back into society from prison, after we've completed our eight week training, most of the most of the responses that initially they talked about was what they wanted to do once they, you know, completed the transition part was get a job and get a house and you know get a car. But the mindset completely changes to entrepreneurship. So, you know, that goes back to even with our kids. We instill in the uh, the true definition of the words that are being used. Uh, Mr. Wilson and the principal, each one of those 10 uh, words that we use, we identify and define about Webster, 
Western dictionary, but we expound on them for the real meaning. And the real meaning are the ones that's going to gravitate and capture the mind of our kids and mold them and shape them into uh, bypassing the part the unfairness of it all. We are not discrediting or minimizing that things were unfair, we were dealt a hard hand and all those kind of things. We are not. But we do want to embed in them a mindset where they are not held hostage to who, that blueprint that has been taught to them. Right, yes. Uh, Albert, do you want to weigh in on that at all? Sure. Well, I mean, look, I, I, I'm a firm believer in um, looking at all perspectives. Uh, let's let's put different different opinions, uh, different sources out there, and let's examine them. Let's analyze them, and let's 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 see that. I mean, I mean, hopefully, I think once we start to dig deep into these different sources, students will see what what's real. Okay. Students will see. Um, again, the voices of history uh, taking us to a place that we can trust. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we, we need to separate, we need to separate truth from, from, from ideology. You know, we need to separate truth from, from not, you know, from, from agenda <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, and just look at the, the, the human side of history here. And, and we also need to, to think about what's, what's again, you know, what's going to bring us together to work and make, you know, we have to make each other better. <laughs> we have to lift each other up. And, and every kid, every one of us has talent, has gifts that make each classroom just a, a great place. And we need to tap into that. And the best way to tap into that is through optimism, through being constructive and talking about things in a way like here are our role models in this curriculum. Look what they've given us. Let's build off of that. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, next question is, are there any states? Uh, or localities that are actually adopting the 1776 Unites curriculum. And really exciting, I mean, it was, it's really interesting. So a number of states are considering uh, putting the 1776 Unites curriculum as an exemplar that could be implemented within a local district. In most states, the state actually doesn't have the power to dictate actual lesson plans. That power is much more resides uh, with school boards which is why in the last couple of days, we actually sent a letter to hundreds and hundreds of school boards across the country, just to let them know if they're grappling with issues like critical race theory or 1619, and they actually think that's not what I want. To, I don't want to create this sort of grievance mentality, this oppressed uh, perspective, just to let all school board members know there is an empowering and compelling alternative that's free and that you, is widely available. And so that's where we think we'll have a lot more adoption, which is this school boards and then teachers themselves. You know, every teacher wants the best for all of our kids, all of our kids. And we want to teach them an accurate history, which if told well, our kids will develop the reverence for the country because they'll be able to see the, the, the challenges and the successes. And that's what our founding documents in our history, I think, uh, you know, really represent. Um, yeah. We're getting some, what did you, did you wanna follow on that? Reverend Turner, did you wanna follow on that? No, go ahead, cause we get, I see a whole bunch of questions. There. Okay, yeah. So we have, do we have plans to develop curriculum around uh, figures like Thomas Sowell, Dorothy Bond, Katherine Johnson, you know, the, the, the leaders from Hidden Figures. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, in fact, we have a, 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 a developing lesson on Thomas Sowell uh, now. Um, you know, we're really trying to balance between those uh, African-American figures who are more well known, although I have to say I'm always shocked at people who don't know who Thomas Sowell is. Um, and then also, uh, choose characters that are unknown, 
that that embody uh, the American spirit. And again, as all three panelists have shared, we're not running away from the atrocities of slavery and Jim Crow uh, it, because you got to tell the whole story. And so, yes, and and in fact, um, we invite um, uh, ideas. Uh, if you go to 1776unites.com, uh, we are happy to hear about uh, characters for future curricula. Just know that right now the curriculum is primarily focused on high school. Ultimately, it will be a full K through 12 uh, curriculum. We have exciting plans uh, regarding animation uh, in the early grades. So all this content is developmentally appropriate uh, for all grades. So we're really, really uh, excited. And, and again, I mean, we, we've just been uh, overwhelmed at more than 17,000 downloads in all 50 states. We really feel we're striking a need, but we want feedback. And so everyone that's listening, if you do download it, we need new space. We've improved the curriculum even since it first came out uh, in uh, September of last year. So let us know how to improve it. Um, uh, let's see, does the curriculum empower kids to address hurdles in their lives that they may feel insurmountable? Reverend Turner, do you want to take that? Because I know you, your class is called um, uh, It's Time to Read You Your Rights. <laughs> yeah, we have a class uh, that's, uh, is, is, we use a constitution, which is called Let Me Read You Your Rights. Uh, and this is part of our pen or pencil uh, component. And pen stands for penitentiary, and of course, uh, pencil stands for uh, education. So this curriculum is one that gives uh, hope. Uh, I would say while uh, 1776 gives a, a, a student hope and gives him or her examples, which will inspire them to know in spite of their environment that they can overcome. And those are the kinds of things that are, uh, that are in there. Those those examples uh, gives our young people the opportunity to do that. And then we we would kind of expand on that and try to bring in that uh, mindset of think about where these people were when they were creating things. Think about Bridget Mason, where she was and what she did to become that millionaire. Uh, she was not worried about what was around her or the environment. She used the education that she had, her skills, and she began to become a wealthy lady. So those are the kind of things that you have to look at because when you start talking about today and then you look at what's happening back then, racism then was at its zenith, if we can call it that. There were a lot of people being oppressed. Black people couldn't do certain things. You couldn't go certain places. But yet these people were able to build. She was able to get uh, become a millionaire. Uh, you got others who were able to build schools, churches, businesses. We talk about Wall Street. If we focus on what we can do and not what maybe somebody has, has done to us, we will be able to go forward. And as I've always said, you can't drive a car forward looking in the rear view mirror. And as long as we are looking in the rear view mirror at what somebody might have done uh, and we wasn't alive, the person that we look at and say, your parents did it, they weren't alive. So we have to come together and do what we can together. But this curriculum inspires our young people. And I think every person, that's with us tonight need to download this free uh, curriculum, 1776 Unite, put that in your toolbox and use it with your students because you'll find that it will inspire them to go even further than where they are right now. Wow, uh, Reverend Turner, that's amazing. And I, and I should mention someone asked, you know, are there plans to bring in even more voices beyond African Americans. Yes, you know, uh, uh, stories of resiliency from the white community, Asian, South Asian, Native American, because that's the web. That's that's the tapestry of our country, and 
again, the warts and all, we got to tell the atrocities and the resilience and growth and still acknowledge the work that we have to do moving forward. That's why there's a look back, which is, you know, the historical figures and a look forward, which is all organized around the Woodson principles. What are the tools that young people can embrace today that can make their lives better? Um, I'm just going through, I, we, we, we just have a few more minutes and, and maybe actually um, I'll just ask uh, each of our panelists, oh, that's my son that just- <laughs> <laughs> He thought you were saying you were true. <laughs> that was not planned. Um, maybe we'll just ask uh, each panelist to just give a, a minute, just a, a closing statement for wishes that you have for the people who are watching and how they might be able to use uh, the 1776 Unites curriculum in their own classrooms, in their own settings. Um, uh, Albert, I'll, I'll, I'll start with you. Well, you know, teachers, um, we're always in, in search of new ways to, you know, to, to um, I would say, innovate and, 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 and make our teaching more dynamic. You know, this curriculum is absolutely um, something that has really made my classroom uh, just so much more dynamic. Um, because again, it, these stories are something that connect us all. And the curriculum is something that is so easy to implement. And across, like I said, all different grades, it provides you with all of the resource readings, um, which again, I think are certainly uh, rigorous and, and, and they have, uh, I think, uh, excellent uh, standards that go with them. So as a teacher, you can feel really good about knowing that this curriculum is absolutely something that can fit into any lesson um, at any given time and provide your kids with a meaningful learning experience. Now, you know, I, I know as, as um, Reverend Turner and uh, Ms. Betty talking about, you know, we, we need to, to, to tap into voices that we haven't heard yet. Um, we have a, such a, a, a rich history and I'm so excited for this curriculum as it continues to build and expand because as a history teacher, I want more voices in my classroom, both in the past and from the kids that are sitting in those desks today. Yeah. And so, you know, these are the voices we need to hear. And, um, you know, we, we need to keep adding more. And, and that I think just, just creates again, this, this rich fabric of a country that we all share together, that we're all connected to. And, um, you know, I, I think this, this is truly something that I'm, I'm just so grateful for. And I've, I've passed it on to so many colleagues. So um, thank you again. It's really been uh, tremendous. Yep, thank you, Albert. Ms. Betty, any parting thoughts you would like to share? <laughs> Uh, for how our audience should move forward. Yes. Um, basically, just download the curriculum. I mean, one at a time, they are free, and just immerse yourself into the history that is being offered here. It is so amazing, and it has helped me both professionally and personally enhancing my own life. Uh, and I, I, look, I use examples all the time, <laughs> but back to the professional piece, I'll talk a little bit about the women coming back into society. And I go in and I contract at several different places uh, and we implement the curriculum. We do other stuff according to what the agency has in place, but we always get the buy-in with the curriculum. And an example, an uh, older person to come in, this, this, this one uh, uh, female, and she was Caucasian and she was depressed. She was depressed because she was the oldest uh, 
client in the facility. And so once again, we were able to tap into those wisdom, those words, those words that Mr. Woodson has transpired a new definition. And the one is witness. He identified what is witness. Okay, you someone who witnessed this, this, that, or whatever. But we use that, I use that word with her to encourage her to allow the younger ones to see her maturity, to see her wisdom, to view who she was. And that actually elevated her self-esteem. She still was very excited though when the next person came in was a few years older than her and she was no longer the old one. But hot we can always find the optimism in this curriculum and the history lessons they are so amazing even for me as uh mr parson and, and and pastor turner was saying as as we just open up to these people lives these individual lives and why all of them out there are success stories all of them have one key component in common and that's compassion to give back. And once they ascertained their level of accomplishment and achievement, they didn't stop there. They always went back and brought up to speed the next sick and suffering or the downtrodden or the poor communities. That's that's Mr. Woodson's story. And when I first uh, became affiliated with the with the Woodson Center, at that time it was Community uh, Network. We had another name, but it. I listened to him and he was so profound. I wanted to know so much. I wanted to know more about him. So I Googled him and I saw where he actually had a, one of the Republican representatives, the House of Representatives, one of the political figures that were totally on the opposite side of the pole of what it was that he was doing in this community that needed revitalization. And he took this guy into this community. This guy actually went in the community with him and, and received a buy-in from him. And this is the elite Republican party representing another whole spectrum of existence. And this is what this curriculum does. It brings to life and it bridges the differences for, you know, for all color, all people. And I'm just so excited to be a part of this, the Woodson Center. Uh, I can't say enough about Mr. Woodson himself. It's just amazing. That, and I'm thinking that th this is a guy that come up with these different things. And he didn't just start here. He started way back with his story when he first got out of the military. Once again, like I said, I use his examples and stuff. But it's just amazing that you can use this curriculum in your personal life. You can use it in your professional life. You can use it in your church, in your community, especially in your community, to bridge some of those gaps together, those missing gaps in services that are so often needed. And it's not a whole lot. And that's what's so amazing. He has done so much with so little. And I'm just really impressed and so uh, excited to be a part of this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Reverend Turner, bring us home. Okay, I will. Uh, I would say that uh, this curriculum is truth. It's about truth. The truth of those who have uh, led and sweated and worked hard to make it, and they made it in a nation that gave them the opportunity. So this curriculum gives our young people opportunity, the opportunity to look at it and look at those people that we don't normally hear about. We hear about uh, Booker T, we hear about Frederick Douglass, but there are people that's in this curriculum that nobody ever hears about, but yet they did great things. And so it brings home truth. It gives them an opportunity to do research do deeper research on these people. So I think in the schools, it's a great tool that needs to be utilized. And so I'll encourage every every uh, teacher, every person that's listening uh, to do that. And I'll, I'll end with teamwork. Building this country is about teamwork. Building anything is about teamwork. Team, T-E-A-M, stands for together. Everyone accomplish more. Team work. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you, Reverend Turner, Miss Betty, Albert Paulson, 
I am so honored and humbled to have been part of this conversation. If you are interested in the 1776 Unites curriculum, please just go to 1776unites.com. You'll be able to see all the materials and we download new, uh, new, new units uh, each month. We're really honored. I'll just, I'll just end by just a, a reflection of a contemporary event. I mean, it's, we, we, we all in the last few days have seen just wrenching images for what's going on in Afghanistan on the tarmac where tens of thousands of people are desperate to leave this country, that they're escaping to the point where they're literally clinging onto airplanes as they are leaving. And what you have to ask yourself is not just what they're escaping from, is what is it that they're, what is it that they're seeking going forward? And all I can say is I think they want freedom. They want the opportunity to live their lives and have their families be safe. They want the embrace the principles of faith and family and hard work and free enterprise and entrepreneurship. They recognize that those things exist in our country and they want to be part of it. And so it's really important that our rising generation, our young people understand what they have, that it's not a rejection of our founding principles is what they need to learn about, but how the embrace of those ideas those are the tools that are gonna allow them to become agents of their own uplift. So the self-betterment, the self-renewal that's embedded in our founding documents, the constitution, the declaration of independence, those are the tools that our hope is that 1776 Unites curriculum can animate in a whole new way for our young people. So with that note, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you very much, Betty. Thank you very much, Reverend Turner. And thank you for everyone who's watching. We will have this uh, webinar posted on our website on 1776unites.com. We will definitely make this recording available and we look forward to working together. Teamwork. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night.